Hey everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. It is an absolute gorgeous day today. The garden is looking incredible. It's looking so good right now. I think that it's gotten so much moisture this winter and early spring that one sunny day and all the plants are just like, hello. <laughs> this is very, very exciting. So I am kicking off my planting season with my cottage garden bed. I love this garden bed because it's one of the few that I've actually started from scratch. When I moved into this house, there were five plumbago, plumbago, I never can say that correctly, but basically five Cape plumbago, uh, shrubs that were so overgrown and so massive and they did look very pretty when they were blooming but I decided to get them out this was this was just too um it, it, it was just too great of a garden bed to give up to five huge shrubs so I actually moved those shrubs down to my oak tree garden bed and now I have this whole space right here that I can use for planting and so what my goal has been ha is to transform this garden bed into a cottage garden bed and I love cottage garden beds I think that they've always had a special place in my heart because my garden is so small and cottage garden beds are known for fitting as much as you possibly can into a small space, which is really my motto for my garden. So if you're trying to create a cottage garden bed for yourself, there's a few tips, there's a few guidelines that you can follow, but I think the most important thing to remember about a cottage garden bed is that there are no rules. So that's what's so cool about it. It's so informal and whimsical and just kind of whatever you love and whatever you can fit into your garden. The, the main the main goal for a cottage garden bed is to fit as many plants as you can in one small space so that you cannot see the mulch and you cannot see the soil, which I love. I think that that's beautiful. So that is kind of rule number one or guideline number one. Number two is, is to keep it informal. Do not plant in rows. Do not plant in lines. Do not plant in blocks. You want to kind of make it look like these plants came naturally, like they reseeded themselves cells, right? So kind of planting in swaths or, you know, like clumps here and clumps there is really kind of the way you want to go for a cottage garden bed. Then you want, of course, there are certain plants that lean towards cottage garden bed style, like foxgloves and hydrangeas and peonies and nepeta. And I mean, there's so many of them. There's so many that you can choose from, but I always think the more colorful, the better and the more fragrant, the better. I think that that really makes a cottage a garden bed for sure. And then the other thing, and this is the mistake that I made last year with this cottage garden bed, I put a lot of perennials into this garden bed. So it was pretty for a short period of time. And then of course, perennials don't bloom all season long. So it they kind of faded after a while. And then there wasn't much to look at in this garden bed. So I think for a cottage garden, you want to have a mix of everything. Remember where cottage gardens came from? They came from, you know, the workers who lived on these big massive estates in England and they had these cottages and then they were allotted this very small plot of land to grow their gardens on. And they had to do everything in that small plot of land. They had to grow all their flowers, all their herbs, all their veggies and all their fruits. So really you want to have a mix like that. You want to have perennials, you want to have annuals so that you can have color all season long. And then if you can throw in some herbs and maybe a fruit tree or something like that, that makes it all the better. Okay, let me show you what I have planted thus far in my cottage garden bed. So over here, we have the fairy garden, which I will be leaving that. That's our special spot for our fairy garden. But then in the rest of the bed right now, it's mainly perennials and shrubs. I have this massive Edo peony. I think it's the Bartzella peony. It has yellow blooms. I just think that that is gonna fit in beautifully with the cottage garden bed. Then I have some Nepeta. This is called Junior Walk and this this variety is supposed to do really really well in our zone 9b garden I planted those about summer last year along with this limelight hydrangea and these Veronica right here called pink damask so these are kind of my perennials that I'm gonna keep I do have a false sem spirea right there some cashmere bouquet Mexican hydrangeas um, some random lupin and delphiniums that survived <laughs> our winter 
a clematis that's growing up back there, and then a big bunch of alliums that are going to be absolutely beautiful. So plenty of perennials and shrubs at this point. What I need to add more of, sorry about the shadow, are annuals. And that is, I think that's what's going, what I'm missing and what's going to bring the color to this garden bed. Because again, with the cottage garden bed, you want to cover all of the soil, right? You want to cover all of it, make sure that you don't see any of it so that it has that kind of overflowing look to it. And I really think that annuals are going to do that. And so proven winner sent me out these which I am so excited about let me just go through real quick I'll get them planted and then I'll talk a little bit more about them so I do have this orange appeal black-eyed Susan so pretty I'm gonna have that growing up the fence in a couple places and then I think I'm gonna put that on that obelisk right here can you guys see that it's kind of hard to see with everything all the tulips in the background I have this artist uh, artist pearl floss flower so so pretty they're like little buttons little fuzzy buttons and I just think that that is going to be so cool in a cottage garden setting I think one of the most cottage garden flowers well I should say the two most is this super bean storm burst right here isn't that gorgeous and then this pure white butterfly marguerite daisy I just took a video of a bee right here let me show you guys that video and that just makes me so so happy to see it and then I have whirlwind blue fan flower I need to move because of my shadow <laughs> whirlwind blue fan flower and then I have Lady, De Gu Lady Godiva yellow calendula right there. A romance pink nemesia and then a uh, snow princess lobularia so I think what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna lay everything out and I probably will go ahead and plant them because I do have my auger right here my twist and plant it just makes it so easy I can plant them like that it makes it so much easier I was so hesitant to use an auger last year and then once I got a taste of it it's like oh my gosh what what was I missing for so long? Why did I hesitate for so long? So I am not going to lay these out kind of in a, in a line. I don't even think I'm going to keep them all together. I was thinking about kind of doing groups like groups of three, maybe two, maybe one, you know, kind of all along here with the goal of kind of just mixing it up keeping it really informal that's why I love planting this garden bed because it's it's just so easy you just have to throw plants in so let me get everything in the ground and then I'll be back and I'll show you guys a little bit closer look at all these beautiful annuals I am all done. I've got all my plants in and I even got some new mulch over in this area. We mulched the other day and we were able to get up to about right here and then we ran out. So I was able to, to replace all of it all the way up to here. It looks a little bit different, but that's just because it has rained on this side of the mulch and it hasn't rained on this side of the mulch. So I think one more rainstorm and I think they will look similar. So let me give you guys a closer look at all the gorgeous annuals that I planted today. So let me start right 
here. This is called Whirlwind Blue Fan Flower or Scavola. And I was not aware of how good this plant does in heat. It, I was reading the reviews that put people put on the Proven Winners website and they were saying that in their hot climates, this is the one plant that kept blooming all the way through the summer, which is really, really exciting. So I kind of dotted, I did three here. I did one right over here by the fairy garden. And then I did two more a little bit down there, but I won't show you guys where each one is. Otherwise I'm going to be moving this, this camera all over the place. So the next one, these right here, these little yellow ones, they're so cute. They're called Lady Godiva, Lady, why can I not say that? Lady Godiva Calendula. Um, it's like a Marguerite Daisy. I could not imagine a cottage garden without some type of calendula. I think they're so cute. Part sun to sun. Oh, I forgot to say the fan flower is full sun. So this one is part sun to sun. So being a little bit closer to the fence, I think is totally fine for it right there. Um, it has fully double flowers. Can you guys see that? So fully double flowers. So it's not going to reseed itself because when you have double flowers, the seeds don't develop and get pollinated as well. I don't care if they reseed themselves. I will be totally fine with that. All right. Then moving on here, we have this artist pearl at ad geratum. <laughs> floss flower. This is gorgeous. Part sun to sun. It gets eight to 12 inches tall. You guys can kind of see how tall it's standing already. Um, this one I was talking about in my unboxing video. This was in, inspired by the artist blue version. If you guys haven't tried floss flower yet, I would stay, I would say start with the artist blue. The artist blue, the color of it is incredible. It is so electric, that purpley blue color. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. But I wanted to try the artist pearl this year, especially in this cottage garden. I think it is absolutely gorgeous with these fluffy little little buttons. They're so cute. They're absolutely so cute. Um, okay. So then we have the A Romance Pink, this beautiful, beautiful thing. This one might not last. It, it might not bloom all season for me. Um, A Ro the A Romance series, they are highly scented for Nemesia and they are highly heat tolerant. Nemesia is one of those plants, um, kind of like this Lobelia Sweet Alyssa mix where it will start to fade a little bit as it gets really, really hot. So we, we will see how it does. I've never tried it. There is a new one this year called A Romance Mulberry. You guys might see that in the garden centers. That's gorgeous. But I wanted this light, like clear pink color in my cottage garden this year. I just think it is so pretty. Okay, then here is the pure white butterfly Marguerite Daisy. It is just the perfect flower. <laughs> it's just so pretty. And don't let it fool you. It's going to get 18 inches to three feet tall. So it is going to stand up to this false sem spirea and my uh, limelight hydrangea right there. It's going to be beautiful. And then I have the fan flower right next to it, a couple more. And I'm thinking that they'll kind of like weave in and out Oh my goodness, it's just going to be beautiful. And then I do have the pink damask right here. I'm a little worried because the pink damask Veronica does not get as tall as uh, the Marguerite Daisy, but we will we will kind of just see, see how it does. All right, then we have more of the Lady Godiva calendula. And then up here, I have my Thunbergia orange appeal. Let me show you guys this one though. This one's so cool. Look at it. It's already... I started unwinding it as it was growing together and I, I got it. Let me back up so you guys can see. I got it all the way up to there already. <laughs> That's how much it's grown already. So this is a black eyed Susan. This is called the orange appeal. I love this color. It is just the coolest thing. I was going back and forth. Oh my goodness. There. <laughs> you guys see that? I was going back and forth on what to put in this obelisk and I couldn't decide. And then I realized, okay, I'm going to put the orange peel in it. I think it'll be so very pretty. Right below that, I do have this Superbina Stormburst. It is, it's not happy with me transplanting it, but that's okay. It will bounce back. No problem. You can kind of see the growth pattern of it. It will kind of go out, grow out, and it will cover this whole area with this beautiful purple and white striped flowers. So pretty. Then I have some more Snow Princess back behind there. Really, the Snow Princess is dotted all around. There's another one right there. I'm going to encourage the Snow Princess to kind of come over the step a little bit, and I think that that will be absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let me back up so you guys can get a better look. Starting over here, my Eden Climbing Rose Arch. 
over to the obelisks that I have the Black Eyed Susan. This is a whole bunch of alliums, just a whole mix of alliums that should start blooming soon, I think. So pretty. Coming over here, you can see I have the Nemesia, I have a Verbena, another Verbena, the Floss Flower back here, right in front of the Thunbergia. Oh, it's just, it's just gonna be so pretty. So I will be fertilizing all of these plants once a week, maybe more, depending on how hot it is. You're supposed to fertilize every third watering. So if it gets really, really hot, I might, I might even bump that up a little bit. We will see. Oh, I'm just, I'm so excited, you guys. It just, it already looks good. <laughs> It already looks so good. So I kind of have this feeling that I'm cheating a little bit with all these annuals in this cottage garden, but having had a cottage garden for a couple years now, I've come to realize that that is the key. You have to have a mix of perennials, shrubs, annuals, maybe some herbs, maybe some vegetables thrown in there, just for that whimsical, fun, informal look that cottage gardens have. So these annuals are going to bloom from now until the end of the season, they are going to keep color in this garden and they are going to fill in all these spaces that I have and it's going to give that nice overflowing look that cottage gardens have. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I will keep you all updated on the progress of this garden and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.